This video is sponsored by Skillshare. <gasps> well, next to needles, screws are the all-time most requested canister Damascus material on this channel, and it's something I've put off because finding inexpensive nickel-plated screws has been yin possible. But today, we're going to make two blades, not just one. For the first one, we're going to use filler 1084 steel powder in the canister, and the second one will just be no filler, all killer, just screws and a band of blade steel, of course. So we're gluing our strip of 1084 cutting edge steel right in the middle of a piece of stainless steel foil that's going to be centered in the canister. So that way our edge will be centered when we're all said and done. We're going to line each of the canisters with titanium dioxide paste as usual and more stainless steel foil. We don't want our billet sticking to the sides. So we've got a canister all laid out. It's covered with titanium dioxide powder on the inside and that's lined with stainless steel foil. We should be good. Before we go on, let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsor. Skillshare is a commercial free online community where millions of people come together to pursue their journey. Skillshare offers instructions on just about everything. I've been using it recently to learn about woodworking, which is why it's showing me a lot of those videos right now. This wooden ring project looks like a lot of fun, but I've decided it's time to further my video editing skills with CS Premiere instead, since it's what I use to edit my videos and I'm entirely self-taught. This instructor is absolutely brilliant. It's top-notch content. He's going over key mapping tools here that I didn't really know existed. So there's a lot of quality things here for me to learn. I could spend hours just on this course. By itself, this to me is worth much more than the $10 per month for Skillshare. So do what I did and ditch the internet attention economy and spend a Saturday afternoon connecting with family on a crafting project or furthering your job skills. For a limited time, Skillshare is less than $10 per month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Check out Skillshare today. You won't be disappointed. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. If you guys have been watching my videos recently, you know that I actually do use Skillshare, so I'm happy to have them on board. All right, let's finish laying out the canister and get it ready for the powdered steel and the screws. Like we talked about, this first knife is going to have 1084 steel powder mixed in with the screws. It's going to provide a nice contrast with the nickel plating on the screws, which should etch very brightly. The next canister, no powdered steel filler. It's just going to be screws pressed tightly together, and it should, should be a very different pattern. We'll see. All right, so next I'm gonna mark up two sides of the canister to keep it indexed. So this indicates right here, these markings tell me which side to smush to keep the blade material um, oriented correctly. Or, no, it indicates the plane the blade material is in and I smush the other two sides. Um, hang on. Um, ah, probably doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, look, it did matter. See, it's all wrong now. <laughs> I guess that's why I indexed it in the first place, because that area it should be over here. Actually, with an extra step, this is still salvageable. We're going to cut the billet in half, fold it in on itself so the core material is in the middle, and then we'll grind down to it. We'll still have usable blade material. Now, for the forge welding, I'm using that Sure Weld. I've never used it before, but it's supposed to be a pretty fancy flux. I usually just use borax, but this has got some stuff in it that's supposed to make welding better, easier, including iron powder. So remember when I said that SureWeld had iron powder in it? There's this nice little bright white line between my welds. And um, I think that's the iron powder. <laughs> I don't think it's forge scale because that's a heck of a lot of forge scale to, to weld up without any inclusions. And if, even if it were forge scale, it should have been carried away by the flux. 
I think that's the iron powder in the forge weld that just left a nice bright white mark in the middle of my uh, high carbon steel weld line. If you guys think it's something else, sound off in the comments below. Here it is, it's been rough ground. I like the shape. Let's do some thermal cycling and then we'll put it through a quench. Our normalization cycles in this case are 1550 degrees for 10 minutes, then 1490 degrees for 10 minutes. Then we're gonna quench from 1490 degrees into Parks 50 oil. You guys know I temper everything after the quench. I just quit showing it because it was just sort of boring to film and watch. I like it's grinding, you know, it's, I guess that's sort of boring too. I mean, hand sanding is really boring. Etching is boring, you know, when you think about it. Handle making is super boring. Those drill press shots are boring. Even my outro. Intros and outros are sort of boring too. I, I don't think I realized how boring I was, everybody. I'm sorry, I'm so boring. Ooh, look how shiny those are. You've probably guessed this is canister number two. We just have screws in here. These are cheaper nickel plated screws, fortunately. No filler, just the screws in the edge material. They don't call me discount sure app for nothing. And it's an honor. I've got it out of the canister and the spine has some promise. Let's get it cleaned up and take a closer look. Yeah, man, that is cool. If I can keep that intact on the spine, that'd be pretty cool. You can see I'm having to do more forging than I want to do on the spine and with the oxidation and the mashing up and stuff, probably not going to show those screws very well. I think if I do this again, I'll try to forge it in the canister a little straighter, you know, keep the spine a little straighter and do more grinding. I'm doing some forging of the bevels here because I need to point the tip a little to keep the edge steel going far enough up the blade to uh, cover the point. So. At any rate, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it didn't quite turn out like I was hoping, but more normalizing and more quenching. Then we'll look at some absolutely hair raising and knuckle biting footage of some tempering.
And the second one is into the edge. It should be really cool to compare these. Let's take a look at this one a little closer, then we'll look at our first one. I don't have time to put a handle on this one right now. I am going to put a handle on the first one though. Which one do you guys like better? I think I like this one better personally. Open minds in a cage, hungry hearts in a rage, glowing eyes in a daze, turning around in a hurry, hoping you will come along. I'm running as fast 